What a piece of work is man, how noble in reason, how infinite in faculties, in form and moving, how express and admirable, in action, how like an angel, in apprehension, how like a god. Welcome, folks, to Let's Play Alter Ego, female. No, male. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Steinerk was the one here with me, so I got confused. Shazing! Alright, <laughs> just kidding. Oh, okay. Yeah, hello, um, welcome back. This is a city level quote. Alright, so do you know where that quote was from? Um, I'm not sure. Um, from Stalworth? <laughs> from Stalworth. No, not quite. It's from Shakespeare. Specifically oh. the play Hamlet. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was to be or not to be, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was a different one. Oh, okay. It's awesome. the same play, but different part. Anyway, so yeah. yeah. So now the folks need to know. We left them hanging last time. What did you have for dinner? I had, uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it right, but I will try. Um, I think it is, um, it's called chops. Uh, chops, <laughs> like pork chops? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, I think it is that, and I had potatoes, no, pot <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, pot no, I, I don't know how to say that, you know, the, potatoes? Uh, balls, <laughs> <laughs> balls, you ate balls, <laughs> potatoes, I think you mean, yeah, yes, yeah, <laughs> not yes. balls, <laughs> Yeah, that was one. And carrot, and, uh, yeah. So, mm. that was nice. Yummy. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back to the actual Let's Play now. Uh, After okay. I click the main screen. There we go. Oh, you need a girlfriend for that one. You are trying mm. to move ahead as quickly as... My timer possible. can be set. As po oh. Actually, yes. <laughs> as possible. <laughs> in your vocational life, but it is rough. The more honest hard work you do, the more time you spend spinning your wheels and getting no place fast. An opportunity arises for you to move ahead. It comes unexpectedly. A highly influential person slips up. You could capitalize on this error and move ahead, but if you do, this person's life will be totally ruined. <laughs> well, you are a businessman, and you are evil, so you can be aggressive yeah. or not aggressive. Uh... So, if I, I'm aggressive, I ruin his life? And get money. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> aggressive it is, then. <laughs> so let's capitalize on this opportunity, how abouts? Yeah. Alright. You are successful. The person is crushed. For a while, it looks as if there may even be a suicide attempt. Ooh. Wow. But on the plus side, your resources column increases by five thousand dollars. Oh, 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 well, that was uh, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that was worth it. Yeah. At a party, you meet a group of people who are in the artsy side of life. They are extremely analytical people who express themselves creatively. Some are artists, others dancers, and some self-styled <laughs> Renaissance people. They are more apolitical, non-materialistic, and consider the best decisions one made on the spur of the moment. They are certainly different. You can be impressed, bored, or neutral. Mm. It's neutral, yeah. You can try to become more like them, criticize them, or do nothing. Mm. Be more like them, just to be nice. You have made an inappropriate response. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, uh, well, what do you think would be the right one? Um, uh, to be more like them, you'd probably have to be impressed. Okay, yeah, do that. Or you could be neutral and do nothing. Um, be neutral and do nothing, no. <laughs> Alright. You seem neither threatened by nor critical of people like this. You seem to be the type of person who is tolerant of many different kinds of people. Intellectual, <laughs> social, and emotional characteristics increase. Not if they have a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> you have the opportunity to attend a conference that might provide you with information that will get you further ahead in your field. You can be interested or not interested. Interested. 
go to the conference, obviously, since you're interested. Yeah. The cost of the conference is $500. Do you still want to go? Uh, yeah. Because you are strong intellectually, now you're strong intellectually. <sighs> you gain valuable information from the conference. Your increase in resources reflects the skills you gained here. Regardless, oh, yeah. regardless of what you might have gained or lost intellectually, you have excellent social skills. As a result, you make contacts that help you along in your profession. You gain yes. in your gain in like in resources. Why reflexes? Reflects this. That's why. I see. Okay. Awesome. Let's see. Let's give. I mean, I. Yeah, that means that I will be better at my uh, job or workplace. So. Yeah. That's what's it. All right. Let's do this one then. A friend of yours yeah. since grammar school has gotten mixed up in a series of bad deals, poor judgments, and impulses. Hairbrain schemes. He called an impulsive hairbrain schemes. He calls you up on the phone, sounding very desperate, and asks you for a five hundred dollar loan. You can be pity or angry. <laughs> uh, pity. Yeah. Give him the loan. Ask what he wants the loan for, or refuse to give him money. Uh, give him the loan and ask what he's going to use it for. Alright, we'll ask what he wants a loan for. Tells you that he knows a surefire way to make a lot of money. His plan is to raise uh, chinchalas in his basement at home for fun and profit. <laughs> he has a book on it. Will you lend him the money? Yes. <laughs> it sounds like another harebrained scheme, but for some reason it sounds like it might work. That is, it must sound like that to you. The outcome is that, miraculously, he does make money on it. He gives you back your $500 plus an extra $250 for helping him when he was in need. Ah, yeah. <laughs> you are rich. Sexual material. Of course, we're going to continue. One of your friends is getting married next Sunday, and you have been invited to his bachelor party. The best man for the wedding has hired a performer for the evening. Her name is Helga. The Norwegian <laughs> Tort! I'm not kidding! Yeah, Helga, this <laughs> Norwegian. <laughs> Helga the Norwegian Torch. Wow. What, what is Norwegian? What is Norwegian Torch? I have no idea. It's her title, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah. Her talent is taking off all her clothes, dousing herself in a f with a flammable liquid, setting herself ablaze, and dancing until the flame burns out. Is this what people do in <laughs> Norway? <laughs> yeah. You often set yourself on fire naked and dance? Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> the most amazing aspect of her performance is the fact that she damages neither herself nor the immediate surroundings. After Helga's performance, she relaxes with the people at the party wearing nothing more than a black G-string. At various intervals during the night, she whispers to a different gentleman at the party, leaves the room with him for about ten minutes, and returns. She leans over and whispers in your ear that she would like to perform a very bizarre sexual act with you. Wow. You can be interested or not interested. If she is narration, uh, yes. <laughs> so this is the fifth time we've cheated. Well, tried to cheat. One of them was a dream, and the other one just showed you her traveling slideshow, but... <laughs> so, since you're interested, we're obviously going to go with Helga. Yeah. Imagine the weirdest sexual thing a person could do while hanging upside down and spinning. <laughs> Alright, got it. By the time that Helga <laughs> is finished with you, you don't know whether you are coming or going. She is certainly a very creative and versatile person, as all Norwegian women are. Unfortunately, <laughs> the experience leaves you with a rather unsavory souvenir. Uh, AIDS. Well. Oh, no. <laughs> Three weeks and six shots of penicillin later, it exists only as a memory. Thank goodness. You caught an STD. Uh. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a friend from high school calls you, uh, calls you up in a very serious tone of voice. She says she needs to speak with you about something right away. Her life is falling apart, and you are the only one who can help her. You can be sympathetic okay. or surprised and put off. Mm, uh, let's see what she has to say. This is the sixth time we are going to cheat on our wife. Oh, no, maybe not. <laughs> uh, you obviously are going to talk to her since you're sympathetic. Yeah. 
you agree to meet her. Her problem is that she has just found out she is pregnant and is confused about what she should do. She can't speak with her family, and her boyfriend has abandoned her. What will you suggest to her? Have an abortion, have the baby and keep it, have the baby and give it up for adoption, try to help her come to a decision on her own, or suggest that she go for professional help in making a decision. Uh, um, the one where, where I, I tried to give her uh, help. Okay, well, try and help her come to a decision on her own. Yeah, yeah. A sensitive choice. You must have realized... <coughs> <coughs> that Zach would cough while reading this. <laughs> that giving anyone such a direct piece of advice on a matter as serious as this would surely be a mistake. If things didn't turn out, she might hold you responsible. Unfortunately, it is often very difficult to help someone in trouble sort out his or her true feelings. <laughs> the person may come to rely on your direction. She may begin to lean on you so that you begin to feel responsible for her, even though you do not actively try to give her advice. While I don't want to say that a person can resolve a crisis only by seeking professional help, it is often the best way. <laughs> you are about to spend the afternoon catching up on some work with when your steady partner, you know, your wife, reminds <laughs> you of a promise you made to go shopping with her to pick out a birthday present for her mother, the one who you've been avoiding. You did promise, but right now, catching up on your work seems to be a higher priority. Your partner doesn't seem to understand this. She keeps saying you promised. You can be angry, guilty, uh, or ambivalent, slash confused. Angry. Because it's your wife, we are once again going to be abusive. You can go <laughs> shopping or stay home. I uh, go shopping. You're going to angrily go shopping. This should be good. <laughs> You don't want to go shopping, but you are afraid that if you don't go, your partner will nag and make you miserable about it later. This way, you can make each other miserable as soon as possible. Needless to say, your anger prevents you from finding a suitable present, and the two of you have a bad day together. <laughs> like always. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you two got married. The thought occurs to you that it might be interesting to travel to a faraway place for a little while and experience new things. Someone suggests joining the Peace Corps, that which will give you lots of time away from your wife. You can be stimulated by the notion or not. Um, stimulated. You can contact the Peace Corps for more information or dismiss the idea as not right for you at this time in your life. Um, do you think it is bad to say it's not, uh, it's not good to take it? Depends on whether or not you want to join the Peace Corps. What is the piece? Is that the one? Uh, what, what is it? Uh, it's a group of people who go around and provide humanitarian aid. You know. Oh, no, not in my time in my life, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you'd be turned off by the notion, then. <laughs> it might have seemed like an interesting thought, but it would never... But it's not anything you would ever actually do. Because you're a selfish jerk. <laughs> <laughs> While socializing at a friend's party, you run into some... When you had a terrible crush on in fifth grade, she looks even better now than she did back then. I hope so. She was like 10 in fifth grade, you pervert. <laughs> she is with a guy who looks like he eats apartment buildings for lunch. What does that mean? I guess that he's fat. You can be sociable slash flirtatious, or unsociable slash self-conscious. Ah, uh, flirt. Flirtorious. Uh, of course. Walk over and say hello, or just ignore her. We're obviously going to walk over and say hello, right? Yeah, of course. You are introduced to Duke, her date, who excuses himself to look for something to eat. There's a table full of food over there that looks unprotected. You can make small talk and excuse yourself, or bring up the fact that you had a terrible crush on her in the old days. Mmm, go right uh, to business. Of course. As the sweat dampens your palms, you take the risk of telling her that back in grade school you thought she was irresistible. She had dimples, blonde hair, and three freckles on each cheek. She admits that she resemble that she remembers you well. That she resembles you well. <laughs> you want a woman who looks like you. Uh, she remembers you well, too. She still has a notebook that has your name written on it a thousand times. Once for every Whoa. time I wished I could kiss you, she says. Wow! <laughs> Just as she finishes speaking, Duke begins stomping his way back to your side of the room. You had better be careful. 
he still looks hungry. He's probably going to eat you next. Oh quickly, no, he's a cannibal. Hell. No, quickly ask her for her number or walk away while you still have both legs securely in place. I uh, don't hope this is a die moment. Uh, take, <laughs> take the number. You're sure you're married, but you know, it's 555-0764. Please call me soon. You walk away and begin mingling again, wondering if this could possibly work out. Isn't there the small matter of a commitment you have made to someone else that you seem to be forgetting? What do you have to say about this? I'll take my chances, or I didn't really plan on calling. I take my chances. <laughs> awesome. What a sleazo! One thing is certain. You have made an ex it extremely risky for yourself. If you get caught cheating on your steady partner, you could lose her heart. If you get caught cheating by Duke, you could lose your heart. Literally, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he'll um, eat you, yeah. But it's too late. Oh, uh, okay, There's okay. Not, it just um, ended there. Yeah, so that was what happened. No, nothing happened. It just ended. There is a oh, local... Okay. We don't find out what happened. There is a local blood drive. A volunteer asks if you would like to donate some blood. You can be squeamish or generous. Uh, squeamish. Give blood or pass up? Uh, give blood. No, that doesn't make sense, maybe. Uh, Bravo! <laughs> Even though you do not really feel up to it, you overcome your squeamishness and give in. You lie down on the table and wait for the nurse to take the blood. The nurse is a very thin woman in her mid-thirties. You notice that she wears very thick eyeglasses, and her hand shakes a little bit. She smiles at you and tells you you will only feel a little pinprick. You prepare for a short twinge of pain. Ouch! She must be drilling for oil. Sorry, she says, as she prepares to go in again. Ouch! Just a little bit of trouble finding a vein. After what seems like 20 minutes of unsuccessful probing, she gasps in delight. Oh, I just realized I'm wearing my reading glasses. No wonder. I'll just put on my working glasses and we'll be fine. Now, all you will feel is a little pinprick. Seriously, shouldn't she get fired for doing stuff like that? I imagine it's probably a volunteer drive. Anyway. Uh, uh, okay. I'm sorry this episode is only for those who have not yet tied tied the knot. Okay, so you can't do that while you're married, apparently. Oh, okay. You are in the restaurant with three of your friends, and it is time for the check. The bill is $25. Allow another $5 for tip. You can be generous slash frivolent. Cautious slash prudent or optimistic? Uh, optimistic. <laughs> you are optimistic <laughs> about the check. <laughs> Maybe the restaurant will burn down and you will not have to pay it. Offer to pick up the tab, suggest separate checks, or wait for someone else to pick up the tab. I wait for someone else to pick up the tab. <laughs> sure, you've got like $30,000, but you're too cheap to pay $30 for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> the check arrives, and you wait for someone else to make the first move. You know from past experience that the guy directly to your left has made a big deal out of paying for everyone whenever a group goes out. His father is some rich banker, and this is how he gets his jollies. He is just waiting for someone else to make a gesture so he can upstage him. You can offer to pick up the tab, knowing he will never let you do it, or you can keep quiet. Um, I can offer to take the tab. You say, don't worry, guys, it's on me. The guy to your left says, thanks, I'll tell you what. I'll take everyone to the movies on me. I'll go to the telephone and call one of Daddy's limos. He still calls his father Daddy. That's weird. <laughs> That's awesome. You got limo and stuff. <laughs> cool. You still had to pay for lunch, though. You have been invited to a party at the home of an acquaintance. When you arrive at the party, you notice that you and your companion have virtually nothing in common. You're married to her! <laughs> oh, oh, I thought it was... Oh, nothing in common with the other people there. That makes more oh, sense. Yeah. They dress differently, speak differently, and listen to a different kind of music. Although you are in the same room as everyone else, you seem separate from them. You have been there almost an hour and still haven't spoken to a single person. You can be uncomfortable on edge or at ease slash taking in the atmosphere. Mm. Can you repeat those, uh, this uh, question? Uncomfortable or at ease? Um, at ease. 
you can leave the party early or mingle with the guests. Mingle with the guests. You are uncomfortable with your personality and your ability to make an impression socially. The, your status, status sheet suggests that this is a fairly accurate appraisal of yourself. As it turns out, many of the people in the room are from foreign countries. This information, the information you gather about them is fascinating and rewarding. Oh, nice. Yay. Awesome. Let's do a health one. <laughs> Looking in the mirror one morning, you rub your upper lip and imagine what it may be like to grow a mustache. You can become more interested and curious, or not interested. A <laughs> mustache? <Hello? laughs> um, yeah, I'm kind of mad. So, yeah, yeah, I'm interested. <laughs> You're gonna grow a rich, full beard. You can start growing a mustache, obviously. Yeah. What kind of mustache would you like to grow? A Fu Manchu, pencil thin, thick bushy mustache, or full mustache and beard? My vote is for um, full mustache and beard. Yeah, I was thinking the same. <laughs> your confidence characteristic shows that you are capable of enduring the comments that people make when you change your looks. For instance, when they start to refer to you as a bear. <laughs> the more sensitive people have things like, have you, forg have you done something different to your hair lately? People who aren't as sensitive ask what that thing hanging off your face is. It's funny, the way a man's life is changed just by deciding not to remove something that he never asked for in the first place and can't help growing. <laughs> and you begin to see yourself as a different person, more dashing, perhaps, or mysterious. You look especially classy during that period before you realize that food sticks to your facial hair. One evening, you attend a show with a piece of carrot decorating your upper lip. Regardless of how you feel about it, the, of how you feel about the mustache, Bridget hates it. You can shave it off Whatever. or keep it. Stupid <laughs> chick. <laughs> yes, she is so, so <laughs> she thinks <laughs> Come on, let's keep it. Show her. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm just seeing how much torment your marriage can take before she leaves you. <laughs> she has no right to tell you what to do with your face. She feels that the mustache makes you a stranger to her. She can't get used to it. As a result, your sex life suffers. Well, let's face it, it was probably already dead in the first place. She was unwilling to have a menage a trois with you. It didn't even work on our wedding night, so <laughs> yeah. <that's weird. laughs> uh, who is not yet married? If you are married... Harry Shiner is the kindly old man who owns a candy store near the grade school you attended. Whenever you pass the store, you are reminded of the times he put an extra piece of candy in your hand without charging you, letting you run up a tab if you were a penny or two short, or called your mom to give you a ride home if you missed the school bus. Lately, you, when you pass the old shop, you notice the lights are out. You can be suspicious slash concerned or unconcerned. No, no. Last time someone asked me for candy, it just goes. <laughs> I was six feet underground, so. <laughs> <laughs> but this time, um, I'm going to be uh, unconcerned. Yeah. You are a grown man now. You're in like your 30s. <laughs> okay, you can get information about Harry, obviously, since you're concerned. Yeah. You ask the school crossing guard if she has seen Harry. She mentions that she that he has probably gone to Florida for a vacation. This doesn't sound right to you. He usually takes vacation when the kids are off from school and the school is in session these days. You can seek more information or let it pass. I uh, seek more information. You know that Hen Harry's sister lives upstairs from the candy store. You knock on her door and ask about Harry. How do you feel? Anxious or calm? Uh, anxious. There is some bad news about Harry. Last month, he found out that he has cancer. The doctors say that he doesn't have much longer to live. You can express your sympathy and go visit him in the hospital, or express your sympathy. Uh, we sit him in the hospital. When you get to Harry's room, you can hardly believe it is him. His face is gray and his eyes are half-closed. There are tubes in his nose and mouth. He seems to recognize you, but calls you by a different name. There have been so many children in his life. You speak with him for a few moments, but as you chat, Harry falls asleep. You excuse yourself and you walk out of the room. You hear one of the machines make a shrill beeping sound. Two nurses walk in, walk quickly towards Harry's room. A doctor is called over the hospital intercom. By the time he has arrived, Harry has already stopped breathing. No. Well, stop. You've been thinking about the kind of impression you make on people. 
<laughs> okay. That doesn't follow from the last episode, but whatever. You can be satisfied or dissatisfied. Uh, about the impression I do on people. With your beard. Uh, I'm satisfied. Because you got a beard. You can pat yourself on the back or try to change something about yourself. Obviously, if you're satisfied, you're going to pat yourself on the back. Yeah. Well, a little bit of self-praise never hurt anyone. Let's just try to keep it in perspective. You've just passed <laughs> through young adulthood. This is, may have been a time in your life when family activities took a backseat to establishing some independence. In general, your family relationships are good. Physically, you have not been very healthy. You have wisely chosen to stay away from drinking and drugs to a large extent. In this phase of your life, some of the issues you have faced are what crowd of people to associate and with and what material items bring recognition from them. Somewhere along the line, you may have devoted a portion of your life to a worthy social cause like charity. No, you didn't. <laughs> or the Peace Corps. Nope. Your social skills are excellent. Congratulations on your marriage to Bridget. Now regarding your emotional and personality development. How long do you think you can get away with your untrustworthy style of behavior? Even though we all have our secrets, you are doing a very good job with keeping your wilder side under control. Except for like the eight women you slept with. You are taking life pretty seriously, aren't you? Well, you are far from depressed. It seems sometimes you don't always strive to be the happiest person you can be. Your level of hostility is beginning to turn people away from you. You are frequently grouchy, short-tempered, and irrational. <laughs> At least with your wife. You are usually cool, calm, and collected, which is the complete opposite of what you just said. Vocationally, yeah. you are doing well. You certainly have a good head on your shoulders. You are not only book smart, you also have plenty of common sense. By this time, you have been feeling a bit of pressure to achieve, to get ahead, buy a house, or possibly even gasp, settle down. You have gone through quite a range of experiences already, but there is a great deal more to come. Welcome to adulthood. Life is short. The art of long, the art long opportunity fleeting experiences treacherous judgment difficult. That's from Hippocrates. Yeah. All right. First things first. Let's buy stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course we need to buy stuff. Hello, how much money do I have? You have a lot. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna buy stuff. Okay. Alright, first things tell, first. Tell me what they can buy. <laughs> Alright, you could buy toys and goodies for the wife and kids, but you hate your wife and kids, so. You could buy a <laughs> boat, library of books, automobile. You should really buy an automobile first. I was thinking the same, but what about a boat? I mean, in Norway <laughs> we like to fish and stuff, or not Yeah, everyone, but I just but... think an automobile would probably be more useful. <laughs> well, we can buy them all. Okay. Let, let's just buy okay, a yeah. let's buy a car we, first. We, we buy an automobile, yeah. Alright, you can get an old clunker for 300 a late model used car for 2500 a new economy car for 7000 a new sports car for 15000 or a luxurious prestige car for $30,000. Uh, I'm rich, so uh, uh, I'm going to go for the most expensive one. I don't know if you have enough money for that or not. Oh, okay. I probably should check that. 30000 Um, yeah. I probably should check that. Alright, give me a second. I'm going to... Go out. Let's see. Okay. How much money do you have? You're 35 years old, by the way. <laughs> you have only 17,000. Mm -hmm. That was much, but uh, can I take a loan? Um, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> oh. We're going to need to manage that, and it's, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Let's buy a um, You could get a sports car for 15,000. You can afford that. A sports car, hello. <laughs> okay, that, that sports car is cool too. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, there you go. A Ferrari, I can get. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> what a show off. The truth is, you'll probably never have the chance to live it up in a sports car more than now. If you can afford it, enjoy it. Would you like to pay for this with <laughs> cash, credit? Don't buy. You should pay for it with cash. Yeah. All right, there we go. You are now very poor. You only have seven thousand dollars left. But let's buy more stuff. <laughs> seven thousand dollars? That is not. Uh, I'm not very poor. At that. <laughs> uh, you can buy a computer. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. 
How a much? 32K computer with a cassette tape drive. <laughs> this game was made in 1980, I remind you. For $225. A 128K computer, big name with three initials, work... Uh, I assume that's IBM. Works alike with dual disk drives, or a super powerful 512K computer with 10 megabyte hard drive space. Holy cow! You could have 10 whole megabytes of hard drive space! <laughs> Whoa! I think I am. Do you think I can run uh, um, games? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, that's three. That's 3,500. You can afford it. I say we go for the best one. Yeah, yeah, of course. Is a powerful, useful tool. It builds you vocationally and intellectually. You'll be better at your job. Wow. With cash. Wow. This there awesome. we go. All right. We're How just much buying. did it cost? Uh, 3500 You have... Five. Holy cow, you got 8000 That boosted you up vocationally a lot. You have more money than you started with. You have 8000 now. 8665 What? That's awesome. <laughs> Do you earn money for what, every day that goes by in the game? Or, yeah. Because okay. you have a job, so. Okay. All right, so and we you want. Have a good job. Yeah, you got a business job. Oh, awesome. So I assume now we're gonna buy a boat since you wanted your boat, you know. Yeah. Then again, yeah. a library of books might help you vocationally. You want that? Yeah, b books because I need to be smart, you know. All right, you can buy some new books at $25 per purchase. Do you want to buy some? Yes. Intellectually, yeah, Spear rises slightly. Would you like to pay for this with cash? <laughs> no, we take it on credit card. <laughs> yeah. All right, now let's buy a boat. I'm on yeah. a boat! All right, you can get a speedboat yeah. for 5000 a sailboat that sleeps four for 900 or a motor yacht with crew... For two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, that was crazy. <laughs> uh, I think the speedboat probably makes the most sense here, because I don't know if you have nine thousand dollars yet. And plus, you have a—it's uh, a speedboat, you know. Yeah, well, I have enough for that. Yeah, you do. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. All right. With cash. And how much money you have now? You're up to ten thousand. What? Do you I are making the the game or something. You are making a lot of money. <laughs> you can buy a oh, stereo. My... You want to buy a stereo? <laughs> You're going to buy a lot of stuff because yeah. I get just richer and richer. <laughs> You can get an average sound system with standard round dials and buttons, or a high-tech model with lights, switches, laser beams, and speakers that a small person Whoa. could easily live in. For 900 we're going for the good one, right? Yeah, hello. That's awesome. Your stereo arrives in 12 boxes and takes six days to put together. By the time you have it hooked up, the production on the unit stops. Your model is obsolete. On the positive side, you now have something you have always wanted. The ability to create minor earthquakes with a simple flick of a switch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're going to pay for this with cash. Yeah. <laughs> I get mad if my wife uh, buys uh, some <laughs> shirt. So she buying <laughs> without telling me. No, we're buying lots of shit, man. All right. You could buy some video uh, equipment. Yeah, yeah, sure. For recording Let's Plays, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can get a standard VCR or a VCR, 14 functions, and a handheld video camera for 2000 Does, does it have HD? <laughs> um, this is the 1980s. There is no such thing as HD yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll take the best one. Yeah, it's a VCR, it's a beta player, and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Your new VCR good. has... <laughs> Freeze frames, still shot capability, slow mo, super slow mo, incredibly slow mo, and numerous other features. Your camera helps justify your need for recording events and possessions. We're going to pay for oh, this cash. Awesome. Yeah. 
Can and... I buy instruments like guitars or? Um, Give me a second. Instruments. You're up to twelve thousand now. Making, what? We're making money fa money faster than we can spend it. <laughs> Let's see. Um, no, you cannot buy any instruments. You can buy a watch right. though. Let's buy a watch. Yeah, yeah. You can get cheap, well. <laughs> better. You can get a five hundred dollar watch. Uh, wow, that was kind of cheap. <laughs> yeah, I want that one. <laughs> Gold plated, obviously. You are obviously a person who values status purchases. Your new watch impresses people, so social sphere rises moderately. Pay for this yeah. with cash. Um, yeah, because uh, uh, I look better with cool watch. That's why my social skills goes up. All right. Okay. So, what kind of photo equipment do you want? A standard automatic pocket travel camera that's fifty dollars. A basic thirty-five millimeter camera set up with instruction booklet, one hundred and twenty-five dollars, or a computer-controlled fully electronic camera for four hundred. Wow! Yeah, I want that uh, last one. That was just awesome. <laughs> you can hook it up to your computer with, and you can store up to ten megabytes worth of stuff on there. Whoa. <laughs> Another toy with lights and buttons to play with. It takes good pictures, but must be handled very delicately. Cash. What about my girl? Maybe she's playing with the camera. Oh no, I hope not. <laughs> Almost got $15,000. What is going on? I'm getting richer. And, oh, that's so You've awesome. You've got a good job. <laughs> Let's see, we got all that. Let's get some sports equipment. Can, yeah, can we buy... Um, um, more expensive cars later. Yeah. We, we must do that when I have enough money for them. You can buy sports equipment at $25 per purchase. You want some? Want some sports equipment? Yeah. Uh, physical and social sphere increase slightly. I assume you use the equipment you buy at least a little before you throw it in the bottom of a closet. <laughs> All right. Oh man, our time uh, ran out a long really time rich. ago. Our time ran out a long time ago. I forgot. I was just so excited about buying stuff. So um, yeah, yeah, folks, was... we're gonna be back to buy more stuff in a little bit. I'm sorry this one ran over. You guys probably don't mind. Anyway, we'll be back in okay. the next set with more buying stuff, and I will yeah. see you guys later. Kiss, kiss. Bye, bye.